All right, what's up, coders? I totally juked y'all, faked out, psyched y'all out by saying we're going to tackle our auth logic next, and I just realized we can't actually log in because we don't have a login with a hashed and salted password in our users table in our database. So we got to build one of those out, don't we? So what we're going to do is come back to our terminal here, and we're going to go ahead and install bcrypt like we talked about in the lecture part of this series where I talked about why we're going to use this uh, bcrypt hashing and salting algorithm to make our passwords nice and secure. This is going to be a nice little utility that we can use anywhere in our application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to my, for now, no, and we're going to head to our server TS. I'm going to come down here and make a little comment for testing some code so I know to get rid of it when I'm done goofing around. This is a personal visual reminder. We're going to go ahead and import bcrypt from the bcrypt library. And let's see how it works. It has two ways of working its code, both asynchronous and synchronous. Now on server side development, I normally always recommend to do only asynchronous development. For simplicity, let's keep it synchronous as this one in this case is pretty fast in what it does and really won't hold up our server's workflow. So what I'm gonna do here is simply do the following. Let's make a function we're gonna use. So I'm gonna say uh, function generate hash like that is going to take as an argument a plain text password as a string. So basically it would look like this, generate hash of password one, two, three as my testing password, right? Because I'm not storing this in the database, I need to hash it. So what we're gonna do is simply have, we need to generate our salt rounds and that random salt data we had talked about in the lecture portion of this series. So I'm gonna say const salt equals Gen salt synchronously, and it defaults to 10, or we can do 12. 10 to 12 rounds is typically a pretty good starting point. The more and more rounds you do, the longer the hashing function exponentially takes off in its uh, operations and how much it needs to do, in which case you definitely need to go to asynchronous code there. But 10 to 12 is a pretty good baseline that would be nigh highly improbable for anyone to reverse engineer or ever hack. So it's a really good baseline. It's going to generate a hash. So we're going to take and run gen or hash sync. And so the hash sync, we need to know what password or what string we're trying to hash, which is this plain text password, with our random data randomly put all over in it, aka our salt. And when that portion is done, simply return the hash to us so we can take a look at what it looks like. That's it. That's all this utility function needs to do. I could leave it inside of here, but let's check it out. Console.log generate hash of password one, two, three. So when my server starts up, this little test bit of code here should allow me to see what password one, two, three might look like when salted and hashed or hashed with the salt, however you want to say it. I'm sure there's a proper way to say it, but I don't mind looking like an idiot. If someone corrects me in the comments. Well, I didn't build anything yet. So the first error is expected. And well, I saw it a second ago, but there's a second console log. Look at that right from my server. There is a salt and hash version of password one, two, three, which I highly, highly, highly any doubt that anyone would know how to take this value and figure out that it is password one, two, three. Some information we can look at here. This portion out here, I believe, is the hashed and salted password of password one, two, three. This is the type of hashing and salting algorithm, I think. And then this is how many rounds. So there is some meta information here for bcrypt to reverse engineer this to compare, um, but it's not enough for a, ha a would-be potential hacker to glean any kind of information from. So it's, it's pretty cool to know it can do that. Eventually, we're going to have to take this password123 and compare it to this when someone logs in. Because this is what someone will write into a field, a password field on a form, and click log in. And this is what it has to compare to. So we can't just compare the two, otherwise it'll never work. So we're going to write another utility function to test this with. How about we call it compare hash? It'll take the plain text password as one of the inputs, the hashed passwords as the other input, and it will simply compare the two using bcrypt. So we're gonna say, return a call to bcrypt.comparesync the plain text password against the hash password. A very simple little utility function there. So now let's see if that's gonna work. I'm gonna delete this console log guts and say instead, call my compare hash password or compare hash function where it's gonna compare password one, two, three. This represents someone attempting to log in against this thing I just grabbed from my terminal, which is also password one, two, three, just compared against it. And if those two can report true, hopefully, yeah, that means 
that the password they're trying to log in with is indeed a match to what they registered with. Let's change it to password one, two. So this would be an incorrect password or someone trying to hack our accounts, they would get false if they don't know the actual password. So there you go, it's as easy as that. I am going to take all this stuff from this testing code and you know what, rather than leaving it here, let's go put it into like a utility file that we can import and use wherever we please. So on my server, I'll make a new folder called utils. Inside of utils, I'll make a passwords.ts file. And that passwords.ts file, I'm just gonna cut all this stuff out, including the import statement, Luke, come on, man. Cut, come on, man. And over here, we're gonna paste Get rid of that testing code and there we go. I'm gonna add export in front of both of my functions here so I can import them as I please. I'm going to, I'm gonna leave that string hash right there real quick and we're gonna cut, cut it down without any kind of quotes around it and cut it because if I wanna have to test a login attempt, we need to make a user to log in with with an email and this is their password. So I'm gonna cut that password on copy by cutting it I'm gonna head back over to my database and write the following. Insert into the users table, the following email and password value. And we're gonna say test at test.com as the email address and as the password, that right there. Execute that statement. Test it by giving a quick select star from users. And voila, we have a hashed and salted password in our database. No plain text. It's there, we're gonna look up this email, compare the passwords, and if both those check out, we gotta log in, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. So, fun little utility file, Bcrypt. It makes our lives super, super, super duper easy. No problem whatsoever, barely an inconvenience. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. I'll see you on the next video where we finally come back here and attempt to make some login logic or login magic happen. See you soon.